If you have a fairly small and uncomplicated business, you can do your bookkeeping in Excel instead of having to pay for expensive software like Xero or QuickBooks. All you need to do is grab a copy of our easy bookkeeping template for Excel by clicking on the link in the description below. And that's because our template gives you things like sales tax, GST or VAT tracking, flexible start and end dates for your financial periods, up to 10 categories of revenue and 30 categories of expenses, up to 20,000 transaction lines, a monthly and annual income statement, a simple dashboard with a few summary numbers and charts instead of the bloated and confusing dashboards you see on other templates, a summary report you can give your accountant when it's time for them to work out your income tax, and a tax report that you can use to look up the sales tax, VAT or GST numbers for any date range you like. There's also lots of built-in controls and checks to help make sure you enter the right information into each cell and to make sure you don't accidentally delete any important Excel formulas or functions. While you can also come back to this video for instructions whenever you like, the spreadsheet also comes with a comprehensive PDF instruction book that you can download to your device. And as for saving money, you only need to buy this spreadsheet once and then you can make copies of it and use it as many times as you like over the years. So there's no ongoing costs. So that's a quick overview. Let's go into the template now and have a bit more of a thorough look. Okay, so we're over in the spreadsheet now and we'll just go through each of the tabs so you can see how easy it is to use this template. We'll start off here on the business details tab and the first thing I'll point out that with this tab and every other tab, you only fill in information in yellow cells. Every other cell is protected, so you won't actually be able to fill in information on any other cells. This saves you from accidentally overwriting or deleting any vital formulas or functions in the template. So on the business details tab, all you need to do is just enter in your business name and that name will just show up on some of the reports you'll see later on. You also need to choose your sales tax name. So I've chosen GST, but you can see there's some other options there, including no tax. And then you can just enter in your tax rate. So I've entered in 10%, but you need to put in whatever the sales tax rate is for your country. And as you can see, that's good to four decimal places. The last thing you need to do on this tab is just enter the start date for the financial year in that yellow cell there. And the spreadsheet will automatically work out the end date for that period and also the start date and end date for all of the other periods in your financial year. You can also give a name to each period. So you can see there that I've put in the short version of each month, but you can put in whatever you like. You can put the long version or you could put July 24, for example. And I'll show you how you can do that a little bit later in this video. Okay, so over on the chart of accounts tab, as you can see, you can enter up to 10 categories of revenues and 30 categories of expenses. So you just need to give each revenue and expense category a name and then just choose whether your sales tax, GST, VAT, etc., applies or does not apply. So you can see on those first few there, GST does apply and on interest income there, it does not apply. And then we've got something similar down there for the expenses and I've got it so that it doesn't apply on bank fees. Now this is just an example, so make sure you get the correct information in here for your particular country for each type of revenue and expense. So when it comes to naming these categories, you can do whatever you like. So for the example business I've got here, we're just saying that they sell products on Etsy and Shopify and for cash as well. So you could do something similar like that, or if you just had an Etsy store, maybe you want to list down the different products that you've got instead. It's totally up to you. Okay, so over on the transactions tab, I've just got a few example transactions in there. So you can see I've got a few transactions in there for July and August. So all you need to do for these is just put in the date. And then from the drop down, you just choose the expense or revenue category, and that comes from the chart of accounts. And then you just need to put in your amount, including tax. The spreadsheet will work out the tax based on the tax rate that you put in. And then if you need to override 
that tax amount. So for example, I've got 10% in as my rate, but if for some reason there was something where I didn't have any tax or I had say 5%, I can just type the number in this column here and it will override the calculation. And then finally, there's a column there with the amount excluding tax. Over on the right here, you can also put in a description if you like, you can put anything you like in there. There's a reference column if you wanted to put something like an invoice number in there, for example, if you paid an invoice. And there's also a document column there. So if you store your files on something like G Drive or OneDrive, and you want to insert a hyperlink over here, you can just paste it into that document column. So that's a little overview of the transactions, but we will come back to this tab in a minute and just take a look at some of the things that you can do there. Okay, the next tab along is an income statement. And this is a 12 period income statement with a total as well. And then down the bottom here, there's also the profit and loss by period. And there's also a year to date profit and loss. And they're both by currency and also by percent. And up here, you can see you've got the revenue and expenses coming through. So that's the names of them there that come from your chart of accounts and also the amounts of the transactions. So for example, you can see we've got $100 of Etsy sales there in period one or July. And if we come back here, that's that $100 there. Now, if we had another transaction in July, that would be added on there and it would also come through here. So that's all set up for you. You don't need to do anything else. That all just comes through automatically. Next up, we have a dashboard. So this is a pretty simple dashboard unlike some of the other templates that you can find elsewhere where there's all sorts of budgets and charts and stuff going on. So this has just got some of the main numbers down on the left here, and also just some charts to show you your profit um, by period and year to date, your income versus expenses for each period, and also just some charts there to show your income and expenses by category. So there's not much on there at the moment because I don't have many transactions in this spreadsheet, but obviously once you fill out your transactions, uh, you'll see um, a lot more uh, going on in these charts. Next up is a summary tab. And this is just a summary of the year to date revenues and expense amounts. So you've got the amounts, including tax, you've got the tax split out, and then you've got X tax. And there's a total down the bottom there. And this is the kind of report that your tax accountant might want to use when they're doing your income tax, when it comes around to tax time. And then finally, there's a tax report tab, and this tracks your sales tax, VAT, GST, whatever it may be. And you can see there, I've got GST collected and paid each month. And I can use these numbers to help me file my sales tax uh, returns with the tax office. Now, if you want to look up the tax situation between specific dates, you can just type them in up here. So let's just say, for example, I type in the 1st of July, and then I wanted to do it to say the 15th of July, it'll just pull through the GST collected and paid between those particular dates. So that's good if you need to do something like a quarterly uh, tax return for your sales tax or monthly or half yearly, whatever it may be, just type the dates in there and it will extract the numbers for you. Okay, so now that we've done a quick tour of the spreadsheet, let's just have a look at some of the things that you can do. So if we go back to the business details tab, I'll just show you that I've set up these dates so that you can start your financial year whenever you like. So for example, if your financial year started on the 15th of September, you can just type in that date and then it will work out the rest of the dates for you all the way up to 14th of September uh, next year. So there's a full 12 months in there. Now I'm just gonna put that back to the 1st of July. And then I'll just show you that the names that you put here come through over on your income statement along there and also the tax report along there. So if you wanted to give that a different name, so for example, if I wanted to call that say July 24, and then come over to the income statement, that's what would come through there. So if I wanted to change those all to have the month and then the year, 
I could just go ahead and type it in all the way down here and that's what will come through to those reports. So I'll just put that back to July for the rest of this example. So next up on the chart of accounts, I'll just show you how you can add a new account. So let's just say we have consulting as an expense and I'll say that GST does apply to that. We can come over to the transactions tab and we'll say that we paid for some consulting on the 15th of July. So I'll be able to show you not only how to put this transaction in, but also how to reorder these transactions so that the 15th of July goes back up the list there and it's in chronological order. So all we need to do is just choose consulting from over here. And let's just say it's $200. So we put that in as a minus because it's an expense. Okay, and that's worked out the GST for us. Now, if we come over to the income statement and scroll down a bit, we can see that the consulting fee has come through there and our profit has reduced down there. So that was $200 more just before. Okay, so if we come back over here, I'll just show you that we have this 15th of July now out of order. So if we wanted to put this all back into order, we can just click on this and then sort oldest to newest. And that transaction on the 15th of July has now gone up there. So you can use that to reorder things, but you can also use it to get rid of gaps. So I'll just show you that. Okay, so let's say on the 8th of August, we pay for some inventory for $100. And then we can come over here and we can see that the inventory expense has come through right there. So that's all good. And now we can just come up here, do this again, oldest to newest, and that's moved it up and remove those gaps. Okay, I'll also just show you that if that was the wrong amount of GST there, we could just put something else in here, whatever the right amount is. So let's just say it's $8 instead, and you can see that that's overridden the $9.09 .09 so we've got $100 minus $8 there is $92, which is the XGST amount. All right, a couple of other things. So there's a little bit of uh, built-in error checking here. So over here, our date range is the 1st of July 24 to the 30th of June 25. If we try and enter a date that's out of that range, so I'll try and enter in the 1st of June 24, I get a warning up there saying that I can't do it. Okay, so there's a little bit of error checking there. Also, if you have an amount without a date and without a category name, the spreadsheet won't know how to bring it through to the income statement over here. So what you'll get is an error message up there that will tell you to go through and check your transactions for errors because you need to have all of that filled out in order for the transaction to flow through. So that's why it highlights in red like that. So if I enter a date in there, you can see that the red is now gone. And if we enter this in here and say it's a Shopify sale, you can see that's gone. The error message is gone. There was an error message up there too, but that's gone now. So everything's back in balance and there's no more error messages. Okay, so that $50 will now flow through over to here and everything that we've put in the transactions tab is now flowing through to all the other tabs, including the dashboard here, the summary here, and the tax report here. So that's our easy bookkeeping template for Excel. If you want to grab a copy, just click on the link in the description below, complete your details at the checkout, and you'll be taken straight to the download page. If you do grab a copy, I hope it gives you everything you need to be able to do your bookkeeping without paying for expensive software. And if you have any questions, please contact me at any time. Thanks for watching.